Welcome to the Armonino Forecast Management Tool within Dynamics CRM. Um, my name is Joe Alexander. I am a senior CRM sales engineer with Armonino, and I'll be walking you through the forecast management IP we've built out within the Dynamics platform. Uh, here at Armonino, we have recognized the need for many organizations to get a better idea and a better control over their forecast management. Uh, forecast management uh, it means a lot of things to a lot of different people, and there are a number of different tools that are out there uh, available to organizations. And oftentimes, organizations really struggle with trying to uh, take the information they're capturing from a CRM standpoint and, and really drive and, and put it into a proper forecasting tool. So at Armonino, what we've seen here is the need to be able to do that within the Dynamics application. Now, forecasting will combine a number of different things we're going to see today. It can combine information from CRM. It can combine actual information from uh, whatever your ERP application is. And then what we've done also is we've leveraged the power of a Microsoft platform, Microsoft Stack, and bringing in uh, Excel, Power BI, uh, Power View, and some of the other analytical tools to give us a real representation of what that looks like uh, from a forecast management standpoint. So here's a typical opportunity with a CRM application. It gives us the ability to see information around that opportunity, estimated revenue, very typical stuff. As I scroll down on this opportunity, you'll start to see we have information also around product lines. So you still hear that we've got a little over a million dollars in product tied to this particular sales opportunity. But for many manufacturing organizations who need to get better, better ideas to when these products need to be available, or for media organizations even, who are looking at selling a media buy and want to get an idea of what's being sold in January, February, March, April, We've added in a forecast management piece here as well. And you can see here that we have inline grid editing that allows us to take various months and make modifications. So if I need to forecast for February 2015 a certain product for a certain quantity at a certain price, I can do so. And I can make that change into, 2000, into March as well. Maybe I want to add some additional product in that month, and maybe that brings down the forecast price. So I have the ability to make those modifications here and kind of break this million dollar number into monthly forecasting costs. You'll also see here that I've got this concept of a commit to forecast. So for many organizations, this simply becomes sales information until they're comfortable enough to check that box. Now when they check that box, that truly becomes information that our sales reps are saying, hey, you know what, plan to forecast, I'm committing this to the forecast, and we can move forward into that. So this is kind of where we enter the information initially. Now where we start to see the power of this information is quite simply bringing in the analytical tools that are available to you as an organization. I'm going to flip over and look at a couple of different examples here. Uh, this is simply a forecast billings tool where I'm able to even utilize the power of Excel, the power of pivot tables, the power of filtering, and be able to do things such as you know, maybe I want to filter by product line to look at cable data and cable video. Uh, in this case, I can see my cable data here. I can look at forecast quantity, forecast revenue. Uh, I can look at what my net sales are. And even I can start to combine my billings and forecast from my ERP system and my CRM application within a centralized spot. I can look at things like a forecast waterfall as well, where I can start to build out a waterfall over a period of time. And I can look at my forecasts compared to month uh, from, in this case, for February 2015, I can look at my February March forecast and my March forecast and see why my drop-off has occurred there. I can even look at things such as pipeline reports, where I can start to look at my forecast over a period of time and see what stages we're in there. Uh, one of my neat things that I really like, though, is the concept of progress also. So I can look at a progress over a period of time, and now I can start to see, okay, how many opportunities have we lost in each of these product lines? How many have, are, are new? How many of them have not progressed? How many of them have moved forward? And even some of them, how many have regressed? Uh, how many have gone backwards and maybe been forecasted and we pulled back the reins because we weren't as solid uh, in, in our forecasting efforts? And then lastly, we can look at things from an Excel or from a power view standpoint. And I can start to look at, you know, forecast pivot. I can look at a forecast by year. I can look at forecast by rep and I can cycle through these and change it from Kevin to Michael, to Nancy, and be able to see by region forecast amount, actuals, and what that variance is. So there's just a few options of what we can do from forecast management. Again, cent starting it in CRM, centralizing information from an ERP system, and leveraging the power of the analytical stack with Microsoft to be able to provide you with this information.